And John, maybe you can just start off just telling us what's uh, a little bit about your space and what are you finding new and exciting right now? So um, I'm up here for a couple of reasons. I've been in this alternative data space for a while. Um, I publish on a weekly basis, the Alt Data Weekly, hopefully must reading for everybody in the room. Um, I recently joined Vertical Knowledge. We collect and organize publicly available data from the web uh, at scale and have been doing this since 2006. Uh, count among our customers, US government, you know, uh, over 50 institutional investment firms, hedge funds, mutual funds, that sort of thing, and a growing list of, of corporations. So we are a, a, a data provider. We just provide the data. We don't tell you which stock to buy or sell. We don't um, uh, advise you on your business. We would just provide the data to help you make better decisions. And so that, that is uh, a growing in interest. Everybody realizes if you listen to any of the, uh, the, the conversations that have been had here this morning on AI and LLMs and all that sort of thing, I think it's obvious the importance of the data going into all these models is, uh, is essential. Everybody's uh, paying, uh, you know, need to have high quality data for that. And the biggest source of data is the internet. And so we have done a, uh, a yeoman's work of, of, of keeping that organized and, and c continue to do that going forward. Great, thank you. Uh, Jessica, I guess you'd be more of a, a power user of the data. Do you want to, what's, what's new and exciting in, in your yeah, world? Sure. So um, right now, I think we realized on the prep that um, I'm not currently a data vendor. So Fidelity does not um, sell our data, but I've spent a lot of my career working for various players in the creating and selling data um, so I think in this panel, I'll try to represent a little bit of that idea of like data buyer, evaluator, and how to get value out of it. Um, but I'm excited to uh, realize that I'm on a panel with three folks who I had not met before. Um, so often you end up um, very fun to see folks that, I, that you already know, and I've seen a lot of friendly faces. Um, so I've already been learning about the data sets that, that these folks provide um, and gone back and had questions for folks within my team of how we're utilizing data sets. You know, I think the thing I've seen in my career is the explosion, obviously, of the internet available data um, and then uh, the spatial data. Those are both things that I think um, in my space that I sit now, they're not super, super easy to figure out how to utilize in terms of an investment holding period. Um, but I think we've seen more from sort of a risk modeling and risk management standpoint. So we'll probably get into that as we talk about it. But I think that there are definitely players with a lot of shorter holding periods who've been able to have an easier time um, monetizing some of the newer data sets that are available. Uh, Ken? Yeah. Um, so um, Justine and I happen to be in the uh Alt data set in the geospatial category. Um, so you folks know geospatial data, right? Um, counting cars in parking lots. Someone mentioned oil tanks. Um, anonymized cell phone telemetry for tail foot patterns. <coughs> monitoring phys physical assets 24 by 7. But there's now an emerging opportunity occurring uh, right now is, is basically uh, understanding climate risk is going to be a major theme for investment managers on a forward-looking basis. Um, and in the current state, right, a lot of corporate self-disclosures, um, you, uh, <coughs> you have a lot of uh, mistrust now with that data, right? It's a uh, green specter of greenwashing has taken place. So really, the financial sector has to get down to a more granular level to really understand physical risks. You need to understand the physical assets that the, where these companies operate, right? And so facility location, function ownership, carbon emissions, right? Does it emit carbon toxic releases? So all these key factors come into play now um, in that basically if you were to put, say, for example, the S&P 500 on a map, you're going to see a lot of material differences amongst those companies. And those material differences will create opportunities for alpha and to better understand the risks behind your investments. Uh, Justina? Yeah. Um, like Ken mentioned, Ursa Space is also in the geospatial field, um, more so in satellite and just overall geospatial data, data aggregation. Um, so where we're trying to really understand the market a bit better is both in the continuous updating and monitoring of other data sets, as well as um, data fusion to get insight between data sets. So things between, um, for instance, weather data and asset management. How do we predict things that might happen um, based 
around climate risk. How do we predict things that might happen between the oil storage place and the vessel detection and AIS space? How do we use RF in a way that has only been used in the government space before, but is now crossing into the commercial space? So those are the kinds of questions that we're asking in hopes of getting additional insights.